Okay, so I am right here um, with my suitcase by this family dollar. Um, I'm just getting rid of my suitcase. It actually broke. And the man, um, I'm coming out, the suitcase broke while I was dragging my bag around North Harrison Memorial Drive. Like I said, I could have got it on the bus today, but it would have just been the same thing going from city to city, going from uh, another location where they just would try to continue to set me up. So I was like, man, I'ma just cool it over here for a little bit. And the Holy Spirit was basically like, just expose it that they leaving you outside all over the country and trying to set you up. You can't expose it if you let them run you up out of Stone Mountain and then have you looking crazy on another side of town. You need to let them fuck you over on this side of town first and then figure out what you gonna do. Because this is what they doing to me in this country and everybody who picked me up is setting me up that's why i was really upset and i didn't even want to get on the bus like man whatever i'll let these whole ass niggas see me out here and uh my suitcase broke and after my suitcase my suitcase the handle on my suitcase had broke a little bit but it was still able to drag it and the man d'angelo came pulling out of this dollar general by the north harrison and he saw me and he tried to hurry up and skirt past me without looking in my eyes. And I kept looking at him and he kept, he almost crashed into somebody trying to hurry up and get away and act like he didn't see me right there with my suitcase because he know what they trying to do to me in America. He knows what he did, he know what's going on. I'm not worried about him though. So, um... Uh, my suitcase ended up breaking. I was asking Jehovah to deliver me. I was praying in songs before I seen D'Angelo. Like I was walking down uh, Memorial Drive, just praying to Jehovah in front of all of my enemies, just walking and praying to my God, like whatever. And he, a cloud was over me and Jehovah was over me and he was following me the entire time. He was following me when when I started getting upset and crying out to him. He, he came and then he was over me and he walked, he, I mean, he, he was, the cloud was over me the entire time and it wasn't over them. It just followed me. And then uh, I went to the bus stop before I seen D'Angelo and uh, he saw me and then he tried to act like he didn't see me. And then these people came up trying to set me up. A black woman and a white woman trying to follow me. I mean a black woman and a white man trying to follow me at the bus stop and Marta is setting me up and she didn't come on like when she was supposed to letting people try to set me up uh, on the Marta. So I was like, I'm not even going ride it and Jehovah was still hovering over me. I was like, God been with me. I'ma just walk. They've been letting me walk this far. I don't even want to be on there because I want to talk and walk with my God. I don't want them bothering me and I'ma just walk. So I ended up walking. They got them texting me right now because my phone is tapped and they leaving me out here now they trying to text me. But anyway, let me go to uh, Jehovah because they trying to stop the truth about God uh, being with me. And so uh, Jehovah was over me covering in the cloud and then um uh, I had started walking and left the uh, up North Harrison Road and past the plaza and the black men were trying to talk to me and the black women were trying to fight me. They was knowing that my phone was dead and knowing that I'm walking around out here pregnant with these gang members trying to do shit to me and the black women started trying to pop off out of their car in the parking lot and saying that she'll shoot me and then so I said uh, I backed up and took off my backpack and everything and I was like, hey, I bet you won't run up on me. I bet y'all won't run up on me and this baby. I bet y'all won't run up. I said, because I'm tired of y'all telling me out for these white folks. And then you think you finna be out here trying to serve the Ku Klux Klan. And then she was like, well, that's why you at the bus stop. I said, yeah, but you in that car, but you going to hell with the devil that you serving out here trying to set a pregnant black woman up. And she was in the gang, in the little bloods gang with another black girl, dark skinned black girl in the car. And they start whipping around, talking about fuck me, uh, but wouldn't get out the car and I had the right to stand my ground against them and I just kept walking. They were trying to make me come into the parking lot and fight them over here by the Kroger. And I was not finna do that because they want to make it look like I'm the aggressor when they are following me around trying to start altercations with me for these whites trying to kill the baby in my belly. And so I just walked up North Harrison, kept going, and I looked down and seen this little white piece of paper on the ground, and it said freedom on the uh, piece of mail. And I kept walking, and I seen an apartment complex where they set me up, and there was a torn up American flag right there. And this black man stopped me and was 
was like, hey, uh, I want to have some fun. I'll give you some money. I said they tortured me by the KKK, helped me with some donations then. He said, yeah, but I want you to have sex with me. And I just kept it moving. And then so um, he tried to hurry up and skeet off, and they stopped the audio on my video so I couldn't expose what he was doing. And then so I walked up the street to the Chevron and stood right there, and I was praying and trying to load videos and just see what information that I could put out in the position that I was in. And they had an all-black man come bother me and try to start an altercation with me. They had a Mexican man come and ask me if I was married, would I have sex with him, and would I drink liquor? And he asked me if I wanted something to drink. I said no. And then he said, let me buy you a beer. Let me buy you a beer. And I said no. I said I'm pregnant and I'm not drinking. And he was trying to entice me to drink beer. And then so... um I had prayed to God, and I was like, Lord, I started praying um, at some point because I ended up walking down the street. All this stuff happened, and I ended up going off, you know, and praying to Jehovah all day, all day long. This stuff had been happening so much mumbo-jumbo that it's not even in the same order that it actually happened. But what I will tell you is about Jehovah. And I prayed to Jehovah while I was walking up North Harrison, and I held the Bible up in front of all of their faces as they were swarming around me, trying to set me up outside in their cars. And I prayed against them in the name of Jehovah over in the spirit and tongues and then I held my Bible up and I prayed up to my God about delivering me and exposing this country about what they doing and then I just kept on walking saying I'm not scared and I said God I said you're gonna have to deliver me from this tonight I said or just go ahead and let them kill me then I said because I can't take it no more Jehovah I said I cannot take them setting me up I cannot take these black people keep setting me up and I said at the bus stop I said Jehovah Jesus Christ I said said you have to expose these black people that's helping them. You got to expose these African Americans because they are the only thing that is covering up what these whites are doing to me. They are the only ones who are covering up the information by doing what they're doing. And then the white man, he was sitting there listening, trying to set me up at the bus stop. My back is hurting, trying to carry this book bag. I'm going to have to carry it a little higher. Oh, Jesus is making my back hurt, but I can sit it down. Let me sit it down while I'm talking to y'all. Um, so uh, I got to hurry up because they cutting off the audio. They only let me make seven minute, 10 minute videos trying to say I don't got storage. Y'all see me with 30 minute videos and they over here trying to stop my storage. I had to take that backpack off. Oh my God, it didn't hurt that bad, but I see I'm only going to be able to carry it for shorter distances. Um, but anyway, um, let me just tell y'all because my suitcase broke. But anyway, um, let me just tell y'all I had emptied out stuff. But let me tell y'all what I said to Jehovah. After that, I was like, God, just go ahead and let them kill me or deliver me, Jehovah. I said, because I am tired of them torturing me and this baby. I am tired of all the wickedness that they have done to us. I am so tired. I was like, go ahead and let them just kill me tonight because I am tired. They doing so foul. They so foul with what they did to me and my children that it is worthy of me beating the hell out of one of them. But I'm not going to do that. And I'm pregnant. I have a son that I'm trying to get to. I do not want to be fighting these people. But I'm like, I know what they are trying to do to me. So I just said to my God, because they're going to try to lie and say that I'm lying and that I'm crazy and that everybody can't be lying on this lady. Oh, we tried to help her. No, my God knows what is going on. On. My God knows that they are setting me up in this country. My God knows why I'm so afraid while I've been putting out this information. And I said, you know what? I am tired of being scared of them. Just go on ahead and let them kill me tonight. And that's why I'm over here outside. Like, nah, fuck that. I'm not finna flee downtown where they tried to kill me. I'm not finna, finna flee to Dunwoody where they tried to arrest me. I'm not finna flee to the south side where they tried to murder me. I'm not going nowhere tonight. I'm gonna stay over here and I'm gonna stay outside. And I was like, God, just go on and let them kill me then or Jehovah deliver me from this because they I hadn't realized they've been torturing me in this baby since I got out that jail August 2019 it is 2021 that's why I said go on and let them kill me then and when I walked up North Harrison after I prayed that prayer, I prayed, I picked up my Bible and I prayed against the convenience store across the street to sit go. I prayed against all of the stores right there because they letting black males hang out right there and harass me and all of the convenience stores all over the country. Because my white baby daddy and his family and everybody, they've been surveilling me. 
since I was since my baby daddy was in prison. And then he got out of the prison attacking me. And they don't want the evidence about that to come out. They have done so much to me and my children that I ask God, just if you do not deliver me tonight, I'm not saying that you can't, but God, please put me out my misery and just let them kill me. Or Jehovah and Jesus Christ, please deliver me tonight if it be your will, because I am tired of these wicked people doing this stuff to me. I am not that afraid to die. I don't want to leave my baby here with these people. I don't. I don't. Otherwise, I'd have been fought them and I'd have been let them kill me if it was not for Melbourne, my son, and if it was not for this baby that I'm carrying. I would have been fought these people and gladly let the entire United States jump on me and kill me because you're not going to do that bullshit to me. And it's by the grace of God that I got a son and that I am pregnant because I ain't finna do shit. You're going to have to run up on me. And that's what God was saying. And that's why I said to God, just go on and let them kill me or deliver me. Please. I'm not saying that you can't deliver me. But if it's not your will, don't let them kill my son and just let them kill me. But I don't want to leave my baby here. And I know what God showed me. He showed me with a newborn. And he showed me get my son back at around like five years old when I was in the jail. So I'm holding on for my babies and my God. And when I went up to the Chevron, uh, after I prayed, I was good. I prayed against them right in their faces. I prayed against their streets. I prayed against all of their cars as they were driving up the street. I held on my Bible as they was riding by and they saw me and I prayed against all of them. But I didn't scream at them like I was doing earlier. I prayed with my Bible just, in, uh, just like this. I said, I am to the Moko Sinte. I did a Moko Sinte of a son to the Moko Sada. But you know, they couldn't hear me because they was in their cars and I was not loud. But I, I had to do it. And so I walked up to the Chevron and I was sweating. It was the Lord made it start sprinkling on me because they had me walking in the heat. And it was raining enough to cool me down. And He hovered over me all the way over me, not them, but me. And they were still following me, being wicked, knowing that Jehovah was right over me. They are evil. They are Satanists. And they know that they think they fighting Jehovah and Jesus, and they are out of their minds. And so I went to the Chevron uh, right there, and when I went in, I was sweating when I came in the store. I was trying to see if I could afford me a little snack cake or something. And when I came in the store, there was a gang of black guys hanging out in front of the store and girls. And when I came in the door, they were like, hey, Shotty, what's wrong with you? Because I'm all sweating and stuff. And I said, yeah, being chased by the KKK ain't easy. And they started laughing and making jokes about it. And then they ended up filming me. Uh, uh, crying, saying that the KKK tortured me and my baby, and they started laughing, and I said, okay, y'all laughing. I'm like, okay, we gonna see about that, and the nigga threatened, we got into it. And y'all know how it go when the motherfuckers get into it. Like, nah, y'all ain't gonna be up here laughing at my baby while gang member trying to set us up out here on this same street. Y'all ain't finna be laughing at my baby and get away with it. And after I had asked God, I said, go on, let them kill me or Jehovah deliver me. Me and the nigga got into it because Jehovah said, this nigga finna get popped out this bullshit. No, nah. and he said they wanted to kill me. God said he was going to pop Colin, man. And they over here playing and God showed me a lot of African-American men getting in a lot of trouble about this. And so for them to be up in there laughing and, and trying to film me while I was crying, I told the light-skinned nigga, run up on me then, fam. If you feel the need to pull out a camera and film me while I'm crying, talking about my, ba my baby, the KKK torturing me and my baby in a jail cell, then come on and run up then. I said, because I'm done with y'all bullshit. And he kept laughing, kept laughing. And one of the niggas threatened to kill me. But it ain't about him threatening to kill me. It ain't about that. It's about the fact that I asked my God. I said, go ahead and let them do it. Because I know what vengeance God said going to come on my enemies. 
and they, and they know that what they deserve. And that's why they going out their way to follow me and surveil me like they pray, trying to hunt me and hurt me in this child. But the point is, he didn't, nobody killed me. Not tonight. Not in that, that night. It's 12, 38. So I didn't get killed. And I could have got shot right up there. Because I tried all them niggas. Not like that. But I prayed against them right in their face. And I, and I prayed that God destroy them. Because they know what they're doing. And they don't need to go unpunished. Because you're trying to kill a pregnant woman and her child. And you laughing about it. And you trying to film me for these witchcraft celebrities. And these witchcraft white women crying for that Black Lives Matter bullshit. And after they erasing my channels while I'm putting out all this information. Thinking they're going to go back and erase my videos. And then kill me. And then have these thugs with videos of me. And then have people with videos of me. After they was out here leaving me out here trying to attack me on the streets. God said what they are doing from his wrath will be worthy of death. And God said that he will kill for me. And they know that. And they threatened to rape my child. So this is very serious because I didn't know that these motherfuckers was that goddamn wicked. Now, I knew they was evil, but I didn't know how much. And they know that I know now. And it's all these people. And so I walked down Central. And when I walked down Central Drive, after me and the thugs had it out, I, I prayed against them like I did with my Bible. And I said, And they started laughing. But I said, <clears throat> I know what it means. And I kept going. And I walked down Central. And they kept trying to solicit me. They had one man came and asked me, do you need help? I'll give you $30 for sex. And one man asked me, can he eat my vagina? And one man walked up drunk asking me if I wanted something out the store and if I needed a place to stay, I said I'll stay tonight so I could, you know, just stay tonight and keep it moving. And I don't want no sex with you. He, a woman came running up out of the house on some skit shit with a gang color shirt on. He's talking about she smoked crack, uh, but they just trying to set me up because he tried to rape me up in the house after his roommate left and I left because God told me to. And I made it right here to where this family dollar is. And I emptied out my suitcase. And I wanted to show y'all that my backpack is full of whatever necessities I can have. God got me a backpack just in time for my suitcase breaking. And my stuff, my clothes and belongings that I couldn't keep because they setting me up is all in the trash. And you know what? This is what they've been doing to me since I got out that jail. And they threw away, they did, they ransacked my home. And they also uh, did this, they, they did this to me with all of my things from Texas. I've had over five different suitcases with these people chasing me around doing this gang stuff, making me get rid of hundreds and thousands of dollars of my belongings. And so this suitcase is broken, and I'm about to take this suitcase and drop it off at this little donation center fucking empty. Because they're not finna keep getting my motherfucking shit. They don't deserve nothing from me. All right, so it was something that I wanted to say about Jehovah. And I'm, I'm going to think about it for a minute. And then I'm going to come back. Because it might be a very serious, uh, it is a very serious topic. Uh, talking about Jehovah, it have something to do with me being right here. He may be delivering me right now because I did not die last night. And I asked Jehovah, deliver me tonight. Save me from this wrath, from what they doing to me because I'm tired. That's simple. I'm just tired. They've been doing it to me for too long to the point where I could easily just punch the hell out of one of these black women. And I'm not going to do that. I am pregnant and I am not violent and I will not hurt anybody. But what they are doing, what they have done to my body and my children. Oh, my God.
Jehovah deliver me or let them kill me. That's what I said, and I didn't die last night. And yeah, they pulled the mess, but I'm still alive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am saved from my enemies. And so I believe that, and I'm right here on Memorial Drive, and I'm about to drop. I'm about to go on trucking with my backpack. Uh, you know, I got all my hygiene stuff, and I'm going to uh, uh, pray to my God. And, oh, yes, uh, the man kicked me out of his house when I started exposing, uh, I started uh, exposing the celebrities that's involved. I'm exposing them. Um, and they, they, they are involved and they don't want to be exposed for being in this satanic coven with these whites and knowing about my pregnancy. So, you know, at the end of the day, he tried to rape me in the home when he saw me sitting there on my phone working on my case. And that's what they all keep doing. Barbara, LaMarcus Sanders, Bianca Hudson. Oh my God, I'm not even gonna go into the list right now. It's not even worth it because I can write a book with how many people, and I'm going to write a book with how many people that they done had doing this to me. But anyway, let me load this video up, you guys. Put my backpack on so I can go and drop off this suitcase somewhere by a donation center because that's where I picked it up when I got rid of my Black Lives Matter suitcase when I realized that the Black Lives Matter movement was fraudulent and was out here trying to help white people kill me. And then I had to get rid of that damn suitcase. I didn't want the suitcase in the first place, but I think God wanted me to go ahead and get it because they was plotting to try to make me add it. But when God made me get that, to get the suitcase, it showed the allowing me to drag my suitcase around the country pregnant telling my story on my channel and then when I seen how ruthless that they was to keep trying to hurt me and my baby with me dragging a Black Lives Matter suitcase around and telling Black Lives Matter telling everybody what was going on that's when I just went on ahead and put the Black Lives Matter suitcase at a donation box a man came hurried up and swooped it up and took it and then I, there was a, a, a dirty black one and I just took that one because I said it'll be better to have just a dirty black suitcase than to be walking around with a Black Lives Matter suitcase and they are trying to help set me up to be killed for white America. They are corporates. They are frauds. All of these people, you have to understand, that's money. These people are money grubbing hustlers. They are killing black people for that money. They are so money hungry. And these whites are over here building up buildings with that money. They building up communities for their white women to live with that money. That's all I got to say right now, because that's just trifling as hell, man. And then they got them filming me for Black Lives Matter, trying to have videos of, of trying to kill us. I don't even want to talk about this bullshit no more. Let me just keep on exposing these witches that think they're going to have me out here. And then they're going to try to remove my channel, too. And I just seen Jehovah like, uh-huh, but I'm still with you. Don't worry about it. Because they're going to they gonna try to do some bullshit. Because they don't want to be exposed. But that's all right. Because I got them ready. And they might shut down my phone. Because they shut down my phone at Victor Golden's house. They shut down my phone in several different places uh, where they were setting me up to be killed. So they might try to shut down my phone. They have to uh, stop me from being able to upload videos to YouTube uh, off of my phone. No matter if I was in a high service area, they done stopped the uh, audio on my video videos from playing oh my god they done messed with my typing on my keyboard while i'm trying to type to tell people about what's going on they are following me all in my damn mouth they trying to have somebody up in the room with me all the time they got people on top of my room they got people next door they got people all on they got jays following me they got homeless men following me this is ridiculous they got old black women following me and they in gangs and then my family is in gangs Ooh, i got to go y'all my stomach is hurting real quick doing all this talking and I want to talk to my God because he's going to deliver me.